Welcome back to Bravo Breaking News with Kim and Lisa. On this week's Vanderpump Rules, we got not one, but two interactions with Ariana and Tom, and they are not holding back. This is literally the most we've seen them talk all season, and Ariana is clearly still reeling from everything that went down. Is she taking it too far, or is she justified in her anger? Kim, I know you have a lot of thoughts on this, as do I. I definitely do. We are going to get into it all, but before we dive in, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any Bravo breaking news. So I loved where this episode started off. We have the girls, Allie, Lala, and Katie, working out in the park. And I just want to say, every single week, I relate to Katie Maloney more and more. She's spitting truths about Tom Sandoval, and she's spitting truths about life because I don't know about you, what she said about working out, like, struck me at my core. I don't exercise. I don't enjoy exercising. I much prefer drinking wine on the couch, watching Bravo. And, you know, when she said she just doesn't understand these fitness people and that endorphins are a scam and they don't know what real happiness is, <laughs> that's me. I don't know how you feel. Oh, my God. No, I I have crossed over to the dark side. I have become one of those people where if I don't work out, you know, if I go like four days without working out, I get angry. Like I get very like irritated. So yeah, I, I wasn't always that way, but I've trained myself now. And I'm sorry to say that I have become one of those people, you guys. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I need to shift my priorities and focus on working out and water tasting because that definitely hangs where the <laughs> Vanderpump Rules cast is headed. Um, you know, they do this exercise in the park and Lala shares that she's going to host a water tasting. Now, I need to get your thoughts on this because I have a lot of opinions about the concept and what went down at the water tasting, which which we will get to. But what are your initial oh, thoughts? Okay. Okay. So if you're Katie, then I'm Lala because I not only enjoy working out, but also I am a water snob. Okay. I'm a total water connoisseur. And I swear to God, not even two months ago, at one point, I turned to my husband and I was like, you know what would be so like, you know what needs to happen is like we should open a bar where you have like water tastings. You have like a water sommelier come around and like you can try different kinds of water. And he looked at me like I was absolutely insane. And I was like, no, I can feel like that could be a thing. Like they have wine tastings. Why not water tastings? Because not all water is created equal. Okay. And true water snobs know this. So I felt seen in this moment. And I'm sure that I'm the crazy one. But you guys, I swear to God, give it a couple years. It's going to be a thing. Okay, I do get it. Like, you know, I'm not a Dasani person. I am definitely like a Fiji person. You know, there are different types of waters that I skew towards. But a water tasting is a scam. They're taking your money. There is no <laughs> way that people are paying. Water is something you need to live. You can find it for free on tap in the faucet. If you're paying to do a water tasting, Anything, any amount of money, you pay too much. That's my opinion. Take my money. Take my money. Oh, my God. I loved it. Um, okay. So we go back to Tom and Ariana's house, right? And we get this moment where Anne is sort of interviewing to be Ariana's assistant, but she's also there to do her job as Tom's assistant. And it's just this awkward kind of shuffle that she's doing because she goes up to Tom and, she, you know, she's wearing her suit and everything. Hi, I just wanted to check in. I'm going to just help Ariana with a couple things. Okay, great. You're good. Yeah. And then she goes downstairs and basically starts having an interview. And Tom is in the house. So naturally, he's going to start eavesdropping, right? They, I guess they forgot to turn on their white noise machine. And he's hearing what they're saying. And it doesn't sound like she really clued him in on what the conversation was about. And this whole time, I'm thinking... Why don't you guys go outside or go, you know, to a coffee shop or something? Like, why would you sit in the house when you know your boss is upstairs and interview for a different job? I just thought it was so wild. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, last episode, they kind of made it seem like, you know, Ariana just wanted to talk to Anne about maybe some other people that she knew. Right. You know, offer some recommendations. 
But it definitely seems like Anne came in thinking that this was an interview to become Ariana's assistant. I don't know if it was just edited that way. It definitely well, she brought her resume. I know. I know. I mean, I agree with you. This was not the time or the place to do this. And obviously, Sandoval thought the same because apparently he was eavesdropping the whole time. And, you know, we go through this episode not really knowing, like, did he fire Anne over this? Like, it kind of seems like he did. He says that he, like, you know, let her take a couple days off. But then everybody's like, no, you let her go. I don't know. But, like, Ariana's kind of tiptoeing around this. You know, she's like, I I don't want to poach her. But at the same time, I kind of need an assistant. So I I don't know. Sandoval's not happy. I think this is a developing story. I I don't think we're done with Anne. Yeah, I just feel like they're putting her in a bad position, right? Because even if Ariana does want, you know, to take her, I think it's one thing if she is out of the house, like she was saying, once I'm in a different house, like maybe I can steal you. But you can't steal her while you're still living with Tom. Like that would just put Anne in such an awkward position. I don't know why she wants to do that to herself, honestly, but I I don't know. I, I just think they're setting her up to fail. I mean, at this point, I think she's going to do anything she can to get back at Tom. I think that there's nothing that Ariana could do that she thinks is inappropriate when it comes to Tom. And I think poaching his assistant is included. I don't know. Uh, I just don't want Anne to I don't want Anne to suffer. She's suffering enough. She's suffered enough for three years in Sandoval's assistant. I don't think that, you know, transitioning to Ariana's, being Ariana's assistant would be suffering. I think it would be a breath of fresh air. But I do agree. It puts her in a, you know, kind of tricky position. Um, And we'll see how that plays out. I don't know. Now, real quick, before we move on, what were your thoughts on the revelation that apparently Tom wears his underwear for multiple days at a time? I mean, not surprised. Not surprised. I mean, I don't know. This dude, like you said before, their house is an absolute mess. And I don't know, maybe he just can't find anything clean. He just puts what on whatever's on the floor. It kind of seems like the vibe that he is. I don't know. No surprise there. He's no three panty a day, Sonia Morgan, that's for sure. Oh, that's for damn sure. That's for damn sure. Sandoval, take notes. So we get this scene between Ariana and Katie. Ariana comes over to Katie's. You know, they talk about the whole Anne situation. Um, And then, of course, it comes back to Katie and Max. And, you know, Katie brings up Sheena tracking Max's location is an invasion of privacy. And I completely agree. Sheena has locations of 54 people. And the fact that she can just sign on to her phone and track wherever they are at a moment's notice. I mean, I'm sure maybe she, you know, from what I gathered, you know, it was probably like they were hanging out one night, you know, maybe they were drinking and she was like, oh, share your location so I can make sure that you got home okay or something that was definitely like, you know, in goodwill. But the fact that she still has it and continues to use it and look at it beyond, you know, probably years after they gave it to her is definitely an invasion of privacy. But at the end of the day, Katie doesn't give a fuck. She she had sex with Max. She does not feel sorry. She feels that it was warranted against Tom Schwartz, and Tom Schwartz shouldn't be mad about it. And I agree with her. What do you think? Yeah, she says that, um, you know, she says that she was definitely in, like, a fuck it mindset. She had just heard the news about Sheeta and Schwartz kissing long ago in Vegas, And it just made her realize, look, this guy's been kind of stepping out on me for years and years and years. And you know what? I don't care anymore. If if his friends into me, I'm going to do it. And, you know, she's she's owning it. So I but I agree. I think it's definitely strange that Sheena has so many people's locations is that she still uses them. Like, it's one thing to have it. It's another thing to, like, use it, you know, on a consistent basis. So, yeah, just PSA, like, if you share your location with someone, make sure you stop, what, you know, after the night's over, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't share my location with anybody. My own husband doesn't even have my location. Do you share your location with people? I think maybe just Andrew, but I don't even know if it's on all the time. 
I don't know. It's definitely giving stalker. It's giving invasion of privacy. And Sheena needs to, uh, uh, yeah, PSA, if you are sharing your location with Sheena, please cut it off immediately. Because you in danger, girl. You in danger. <laughs> All right. So water tasting. We've arrived with Martin. He is setting up his, you know, his uh, bar, if you will, of very expensive waters, fine waters, naturally carbonated waters, which I was curious to try. And right off the bat, Brock apologizes to Katie. He says, look, you know, I was wasted. Like, it wasn't my place to say anything about Max. And Katie's kind of, you know, she kind of just takes it. She says, you know, it's it's cool, man. And in the confessional, she kind of rationalizes it by saying, look, I guess it's payback for me talking about Brock, you know, in years past. And I mean, the comments she made about him were like way more biting than than what he said revealed about Max. But, you know, she is happy to just kind of brush it under the rug and and move on. And later we get this, you know, we get Tom and Katie actually talking about it. And Tom doesn't seem too upset by it either. He almost seems like, yeah, like, get it, girl, kind of mentality. And that's more surprising to me because if Max is truly his best friend or one of his best friends, like, would he be annoyed at Max in this situation? I would be. I definitely think that Max should be the one answering for this, not Katie. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, it was revealed that I think Katie has kind of had a thing for Max for a while. I think she's always thought he was hot. So it's not like a super shock that they hooked up. And Katie is 100% single. She's been divorced for two years. Her and Schwartz made that agreement that was obviously very flimsy because he didn't think anything of it and made out with Raquel three months after their divorce. So I I just don't see what the big deal is. I think that Katie can hook up with whoever she wants in the friend group, out of the friend group. I don't know. A lot of people were saying that even Schwartz and Katie has had some sexual tension here at the water tasting. You know, it's like, Schwartz is like, I kind of picked up on that too. Call me, like, let's hang out. And she's like, ew, no, thanks. I think he likes sort of being put down by by girls. I, I feel like he kind of gravitates towards that. And it seemed like there was kind of something between them. They were like kind of joking at the beginning. So they seem like they're in a good place because she just has zero expectations from him anymore. You know, she knows that He is not the person who's going to give her what she needs. And now that she's come to peace with that, I think she's kind of able to sort of move on a little bit. I will say one thing that I did not like in this scene is, well, two things. One was their outfits. Um, I don't know who had the worst outfit on. They end up making fun of each other. And I was like, yes, I'm glad you both called it out because you're both. it's, It's not your best looks. Second, Katie's not a dog person. Oh, wait, she has dogs. Wait, so why? Okay. Because when she came outside and Hippie was kind of like trying to jump on her and say hi, she reacted like she is a person who has never been around a dog in her life. She was like, Hippie, 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 like stop, like down and like ignoring him. And I was like, immediately jail. Like, how dare you not give any attention to this adorable puppy that is jumping at you? And it just it's just rubbed me the wrong way. But yeah, she is a dog person. So I'm confused. I don't know. I mean, you know, Hippie is apparently untrained and can be aggressive and maybe a little too much. Maybe he was just being a little too much in that moment. Um, You know, I won't hold it against Katie, but I did notice that. I will. The outfit, um, I will say Schwartz is channeling Will Ferrell from Elf and Katie's looks. I mean, I get it. You know, she has a very unique style most of the time. It's, it doesn't hit for me. However, her reunion look was the best of the bunch. Oh. This reunion, I don't know if you guys saw the reunion looks, but she knocked it out of the park. I'm wondering if she hired a stylist for maybe the first time, because I'm usually not a fan of her looks, but she looked incredible. She looked incredible, as did, I will say, most of the cast. The only person who I didn't really love was Lisa, to be honest. I didn't love that snakeskin blazer in blue. But the cast killed it, you guys. Go to Bravo Breaking News on Instagram because all of the looks are posted. Weigh in on your favorites. I think they absolutely slayed. I agree. I agree. Um, But so back to the water tasting. Lisa, I know you're a fan of the water tasting, but I can't... 
I can't with the thousand dollar bottle of water. I mean, Lala is basically like orgasming over this bottle of water. She is like, she can't wait to try it. And, you know, I would be the other people, you know, being like, it tastes like water. It, it just tastes like water. I don't know. I, I wouldn't get off by this at all. I would be Sheena bringing Smirnoff to mix in with the sparkling water. I, I don't know. You know, the guy saying it tastes like dinosaur piss or cum. Like, why do you want to drink that? Why? Why yeah, that, do you want to drink that? That was not enticing. That one, I would definitely leave off the tasting menu. But I mean, it looks like we're a house divided, Kim. I don't know what to say. I love yeah, let us know what you guys think. Are you pro or con water tasting? Let us know in the comments. But let's get to the real drama. And that was yeah. Tom and Ariana. Yeah. So Ariana's annoyed, one, that Tom is there. And, you know, two, he just kind of trying to be the hero in the situation, like going to get, oh, James, I'll come help you with the pizza. Oh, they forgot the ranch. Let me go chase him down. And, you know, basically his very presence annoys her. So it's not surprising that anything he does is going to annoy her as well. But it I will say him running out to receive the ranch, that was a hero move. <laughs> I, I'm not team Tom Sandoval. But anybody who runs out into the street to get the ranch that the pizza guy forgot earns a point in my book. All right one one small point in his in his corner but you know it eventually kind of spirals into the conversation about Anne and then Ariana refers to Tom as an attempted dog murderer he hears it because he's kind of walking by and you just know shit's gonna go down because they actually start talking to each other not really talking I guess they start arguing with each other and Ariana is just letting him have it. She is pissed that about the Maya situation, which is understandable. You know, I guess he had to let the air conditioner guy in her room for the thermostat. Maya got locked in there, got into the takeout that Ariana had left on the side of the bed, got very sick. Ariana had to take her to the vet, paid $6,000 to get her stomach pumped. OK, this is a lot. I will say, why do you have takeout on the side of your bed? Yes, Tom should not have been in there. Yes, they should have been more careful. But also, Ariana, you have you have a little bit of responsibility to take care. And she's calling him out for not taking any accountability ever. But girl, don't like that's just gross. Don't leave your takeout on the side of the bed from the night before when you know you have a dog in the house or just don't do it at all. That's just gross. Didn't you do a trash bag commercial? Shouldn't you know how to throw <laughs> shit away? I mean, when Lala said that, like, uh, point to Lala, point to Lala, because you guys know I'm not team Lala. I'm definitely team Ariana, but that cracked me the hell up. But OK, so my thoughts on this situation, the calling Tom an attempted dog murder, I think, is taking it too far. There is it, no world where he did this on purpose, on purpose, accident on everybody's part. Nobody, you know. I feel like an attempted murder still means that you had intent to do it. You know what I mean? Like th that was not Tom's intention to do this. I also don't think Ariana should be thrown under the bus for leaving trash on her bedside table. Like, I, I don't know. She's it she's locked in her room. Basically, this house really isn't hers. She spends all of her time in there. She was eating in there. She left it there. She didn't think that Maya was going to be let in. I, I don't think anybody really is at fault here. I think this was just a sad accident and i'm so yeah. glad that maya is okay but i think that she calling him that took it a little too far but her rage that she brought out on him i think was just a culmination of things going on the past three months i mean yeah let's remember we're watching this a year later this was filmed three months after the reunion everything is still fresh this is after weeks and months of Sandoval not taking accountability, throwing parties at their house. Now, somebody who Ariana considers her child, who I get, I don't have children. My dog is my child. I would die for him. And the fact that Sandoval is kind of responsible for her going to the emergency vet and having to have her stomach pump. I think it's just a culmination. She's just letting out this rage. Get the fuck away from me. Don't look me in the eye. It's just like ev at every single turn, 
he's doing something wrong. And I think she just like reached a breaking point here. Oh, she for sure reached a breaking point. And you can see that there was a lot of pent up anger that is still there. And I mean, there's a lot of talk within the group, not in front of Ariana, but outside of is she justified in having this anger still? Is it healthy for her to be this angry still? And I kind of I kind of waffle back and forth, to be honest with you, because one, I don't think it's healthy to have that much anger and carry that around with you all the time. And just, you know, it can come out at any moment. But two, I also do understand that to her, this is still pretty fresh. And we've been hearing about it, you know, for a year, like you said. But in that moment, it wasn't the case. And she, you know, I I think she's still like wounded from it. And the way she's showing that is through anger. And I think, I don't know, sometimes it can be really, really harsh. And I think it's kind of putting people off a little bit, like sitting around, you know, the table while she's screaming at him. Like that's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable no matter if it's justified or not. And I think everyone's kind of just like, okay, she needs to be able to like not explode, right? So I don't know. I'm a, I am just, I keep going back and forth, but I understand why people are kind of saying like, you know, not turning on Ariana, but sort of shifting away from being 100% Team Ariana. Where do you stand? I mean, I think in this moment, she is justified in her rage. I mean, if I had gone through what she had gone through, and then my ex was responsible for sending my dog to the emergency vet, I mean, I think I might be even more pissed than she was. I think I might be, you know, to the point of throwing things like, she's only yelling. It could be worse. No, I don't know. No. I, I think that in this moment, I'm not like, you know, I support Ariana, but if she does something wrong, I'm not afraid to call her out. You know, I'm not just going to blindly back her. But I think in this moment, her rage is warranted. All right. So that night kind of ends with, you know, Sandoval leaving and he's just, you know, he's going to extract himself from the situation. So then we get, it's almost like part two, right? We have Beach Day um, that James is hosting. And first of all, like, I got to say, it's so relatable when he was complaining about what a pain in the ass a beach day is because you think, like, you see in movies and in shows all the time, you know, people are in downtown LA and then all of a sudden they're on the beach and it's all, you know, it's all great. No, guys, that is a trek. All right. It is a process to get to the beach. Then you have to find parking. Then you have to haul all of your crap from, you know, the parking spot to the water. And it looks like they were in maybe Santa Monica or Manhattan. Like, it's a wide beach. It's not just like, you know, 40 feet of sand. It's like a football field's length to get to where the water is. He's carrying this big tent. You know, they got to set all that stuff up. Like, I probably went to the beach, I don't know, uh, maybe a couple times a year when I lived in L.A. Because it's it's a pain in the ass. It is. I, I live at the beach, guys, and I don't even go because I don't even want to deal with it. But yeah, no, it's a pain at the ass. I feel like production definitely is responsible for this. They're like, guys, we're going to do a fun beach day. And the cast is like, no, not another beach day. But, you know, it's just another chance to get everybody together and have them all huddle under these small tents. And of course, yeah. drama ensues. Yeah. So we get Ariana arriving and then she's like, oh, I think Tom's coming because I saw his crochet towel, striped towel in the dryer. Sure enough, he shows up with that little crochet striped towel. It's and I just had this. It's his uh, stripey crochet top. Oh, it's the top. It's the top. Oh, I bet she was saying the towel. Top. Okay. Got it. Okay. I just had this thought of how funny would it be if production had only sent one car for them? Because it's kind of far, you know, from the valley to get to like Manhattan Beach or whatever. And them just having to put up with it and like sit in the car for that hour long ride to the beach. Oh, God, what I would give. I know. But, you know, we, we've had a history of not having, you know, video cameras in those sprinter vans. So, I mean, if that happens, when that happens, we definitely need footage of it. Yes. All right. So immediately... James or Brock, I can't remember who, draws a line in the sand, says, all right, Tommy, stay over there. Ariana, you stay over here. I mean, he's just instantly like 
calling for drama, basically. So we kind of get two conversations going on where Sandoval is saying he's going to a singles event. And naturally, you know, people start chiming in from both sides of the, of the line. And it, Ariana's kind of getting set off about some comment that re- that was made about Raquel and flirting and things like that. And then it turns to Anne. Tom says, I didn't fire her. You know, someone says, oh, James becomes Andy Cohen in this moment where he says, well, who's going to mediate? You know, oh, how do you feel about the dog situation? And well, whose dog is it? And it was just like a little mini kind of reunion here. I mean, it's a line in the sand. It's not a wall. Obviously, Sandoval saying that he's going to some singles event and going to be dating and then Brock chiming in, making a joke about Raquel. Ariana is literally four feet away from them. No shit she's going to hear this. And that is totally inappropriate. Brock is just trying to stir shit. He keeps stirring shit. He is the official shit stir of the season. And it is giving thirsty. It is giving force. It is giving Sheena's kind of puppet. You know, he's making the mess when Sheena's really the one behind it. That's my opinion. Um, But of course, Ariana is going to get pissed because that is not an appropriate comment to make in front of her. Um, And yeah, of course, it turns to the pets. You know, Ariana's like, I paid the adoption fees. They are my pets, not yours. You know, and she's just like, I I will not be doing this anymore. You guys keep pushing him down my throat. Stop making me do this. And this scene is when it really hit me. I don't think Ariana's going to come back next season. I think that she has way bigger and better things to do than be forced to hang out with her ex-boyfriend who cheated on her. And this season is just showing that, you know, it's like as much as she tries to distance herself and, you know, draw lines in the friend group, it's just not going to happen because they're on a show together. And I think she knows that and she keeps trying to, you know, join the group and be a part of it. But it's it's not working. It, it, it's not working for her. And it doesn't need to work for her. She doesn't need this show. She doesn't need this money anymore. She has so many other gigs going on. So this is where it really hit me. This may be Ariana's last season. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it's the show's last season. It does feel like there are so many fractures now in the group and things are kind of feeling forced. And when that happens, you know, when those authentic relationships aren't there, then the chemistry is just not there and the show is just not there. You know, now we have the Valley, which is kind of the 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 grown up version of Vanderpump, right? And I think it would make a lot of sense to see Sheena transition to the Valley, to see Lala transition to the Valley. We're already getting appearances from Schwartz there. So I don't know. I mean, I don't think any of us would be surprised if this was, in fact, the final season of Vanderpump. There were rumors that season 10 was going to be the last season and then, you know, Scandaval blew up. So, but I think you're right. I think Ariana is fed up and she's just, you know, you guys keep forcing me into these positions where I have to be, you know, hang out with this guy and I don't want to be anywhere near him. And I think that's what makes it a really unique situation with exes, right? Like, Most people who have that bad of a breakup, you're not going to see your ex. You're not going to be forced to hang out with them. And she is. They are. And so it's like, it's just going to, it's a recipe for disaster. I think, you know, she showed a lot of her anger and it looks like in the preview for the next episode, that anger kind of shifts to sadness and she has a breakdown with Sheena and Lala. And, you know, we kind of get to see that more vulnerable side of her. And not the tough, just rage that she that she showed on this episode. Yeah, I just think that Ariana doesn't need this show. I think that the show does have a future, um, but it might look a little different than it does now. So I don't know. We'll see. Let us know what you guys thought of this episode in the comments. Are you team Ariana? What do you think? Do you think she was warranted in her rage? Let us know in the comments and make sure you subscribe. We'll be back next week with more Bravo Breaking News. See you all next time. Bye.